tonight we will begin our 14th lecture on Jeremiah. We will begin with Jeremiah chapter 27. The title of chapter 27 is Yoke of Straps and Crossbars. First, the prophecy says that Judah will wear Babylon's yoke made of straps and crossbars, verses 1 through 7. Second, not wearing the yoke of Babylon will result in punishment from God, verses 8 through 13. Third, listening to the false prophets will turn the city into a wasteland, verses 14 through 17. Fourth, the prophecy says that the temple's furnishings will be moved to Babylon, verses 18 through 22. Read verse 1. Early in the reign of Zedekiah, son of King Josiah, king of Judah, this word came to Jeremiah from the Lord. Jehoiakim appears in the original text. However, it was meant to say King Zedekiah. If you read chapters 27 verses 3, 12, and 24, and chapter 28 verse 1, the text refers to King Zedekiah. The people recording the text made an error when copying the Bible. Therefore, the chapter refers to the reign of King Zedekiah, verses 2 through 3. This is what the Lord said to me, Make a yoke out of straps and crossbars and put it on your neck. Then send word to the kings of Edom, Moab, Amnon, Tyre and Sidon through the envoys who have come to Jerusalem to Zedekiah king of Judah. God commanded Jeremiah to prophesy to King Zedekiah with a yoke of wood placed on his neck. Jeremiah told the prophecy to the envoys of Edom, Moab, Ammon, Tyre, and Sidon, those who came to visit King Zedekiah. Jeremiah was to prophesy to the envoys to the king. Zedekiah was planning to build an alliance with the kings of the envoys to fight against the Babylonians. However, God, through Jeremiah, told the nations to wear the yoke of Babylon. Verses 5 through 6 With my great power and outstretched arm, I made the earth and its people, and the animals that are on it, and I give it to anyone I please. Now I will hand all your countries over to my servant Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon. God, with his power and sovereignty, decided to give all the nations and all the people to King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. God said he would hand over all nations to the Babylonian king. Here God calls the king of Babylon my servant. Sometimes God will use kings 
of the unbelieving world to punish other nations. Romans chapter 13 verses 1 through 4. Sometimes when his chosen people sin, God will use foreign kings as tools for punishment. We must wear the yoke that God has placed on us. Verse 8. However, if however any nation of kingdom will not serve Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or bow its neck under his yoke, I will punish that nation with the sword, famine, and plague, declares the Lord, until I destroy it by his hand. God would punish any nation that does not wear the yoke of Babylon or does not serve the king of Babylon with the sword, famine, and plague. God's will is for the nations to carry the yoke of Babylon. To do so is to obey God's command. When the yoke is carried, pride is destroyed and humility is found. People will then repent and trust in God. Verse 9 So do not listen to your prophets, your diviners, your interpreters of dreams, your mediums, or your sorcerers who tell you you will not serve the king of Babylon. God commands the people to not listen to the false prophets. They are to not listen to diviners interpreters of dreams, mediums, and sorcerers. They are people who tell false prophecies. Those who listen to the false prophets will face the judgment of God. Verse 11 but if any nation will bow its neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, I will let that nation remain in its own land to till it and to live there, declares the Lord. The nations that bow their necks under the yoke of Babylon will remain in their land and receive God's blessing. Anyone who obeys the word of God and wears the yoke would be blessed, but anyone who does not would die by the sword, famine, and plague. Today, we must carry the yoke that God has given us. Matthew chapter 11 verses 28 through 30. We must also have the faith of a servant. Philippians chapter 2 verses 5 through 8. If we do not carry the yoke that God has given us, God will place an iron yoke upon us. Chapter 28, verse 13. Therefore, we must wear the yoke of the gospel and of the church. We must properly wear the yoke of the family or the workplace. We must carry the yoke in the church when we evangelize, pay visits to people, teach children on Sundays, worship 
and build churches. Verse 14. Do not listen to the words of the prophets who say to you, You will not serve the king of Babylon, for they are prophesying lies to you. Through Jeremiah, God told the people to turn their ears away from false prophets. Jeremiah said to the king and his people, Do not listen to the words of the false prophets. God said he would chase away the false prophets and destroy them. Verses 16 and 17 also give warning about the false prophets and their false prophecies. Their prophecies would not come true. Eventually, as God spoke through Jeremiah, the people of Judah were taken as prisoners to Babylon. Chapter 29, verse 10. Verse 18. If they are prophets and have the word of the Lord, let them plead with the Lord Almighty that the furnishings remaining in the house of the Lord and in the palace of the king of Judah and in Jerusalem not be taken to Babylon. If the false prophets were true prophets, they would have prayed to God. With the passing of time, their lies would be revealed. The false prophets taught the people that Jerusalem would not be destroyed. However, God's word tells us that the people would be taken captive to Babylon and the temple's furnishings are to be taken away as well. The prayers of the false prophets are revealed to be fruitless. In the end, Things happened according to God's word. We will continue with Jeremiah chapter 28. The title of this chapter is A Wooden Yoke and an Iron Yoke. First, the false prophets predict that the prisoners would return to Judah within two years, verses 1 through 4. Second, the words of the true prophet are spoken to the people, verses 5 through 11. Third, if the wooden yoke is broken, an iron yoke will be received verses 12 through 14. Fourth, God removes the false prophet Hananiah from the face of the earth, verses 15 through 17. Read verse 1. In the fifth year of that same year, the fourth year, Early in the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, the prophet Hananiah, son of Azur, who was from Gibeon, said to me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and all the people. Here the false prophet from the reign of King Zedekiah tells his prophecy. According to Hananiah, 
God breaks the yoke of the king of Babylon. In verse three, he prophesies the release of the people of Judah within two years. The false prophet pretends to be from God. He acted and spoke as if he was a true prophet, and he predicted liberation from Babylon within two years. Jeremiah, on the other hand, predicted a return within seventy years. Whose word is correct? The false prophets claimed that captivity will end in two years, while the true prophet said it would take seventy years. The people were not able to differentiate between the words of the true prophet. And the words of the false prophets. We must know how to distinguish between the words of the true prophets and false prophets. To the people, the false prophets' prophecies sounded better. However. This was not the will of God. Verse five. Then the prophet Jeremiah replied to the prophet Hananiah before the priests and all the people who were standing in the house of the Lord. Jeremiah spoke in verse five. Jeremiah himself desired for the people of Judah to return to their land. He wanted them to be able to go back home at an earlier time, but this was not God's will for them. Verse seven. Nevertheless. Listen to what I have to say in your hearing, and in the hearing of all the people. Jeremiah continued to speak. The true prophet had prophesied about the wars, disasters, and plagues of the past. A true prophet knows how to point out sins and to correctly prophesy war, disaster, and plague. False prophets do not point out sins, but they speak only of peace and a good future. Chapter six, verse fourteen. Chapter eight, verse fifteen. Verse nine. But the prophet who prophesies peace will be recognized as one truly sent by the Lord only if his prediction comes true. Furthermore, a true prophet's Prophecies are fulfilled according to the word of God. If a true prophet receives a message of peace from God, the prophecy of peace will be fulfilled. When false prophets prophesy peace. The prophecy does not happen. The lie is revealed to be a lie. Deuteronomy chapter eighteen verse twenty-two. False prophets are different from true prophets. 
A true prophet prophesies in order for people to repent. False prophets prophesy according to the flesh, but true prophets listen to the Holy Spirit. False prophets' prophecies do not come true. But true prophets' prophecies are fulfilled. False prophets place their focus on outward institutional things. True prophets regard salvation, eternal life, and life as the important things. True prophets. Normally, prophesy disaster. Also, the prophecies of true prophets are fulfilled. Verse ten. Then the prophet Hananiah took the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah and broke it. In the presence of the people. Hananiah removes Jeremiah's yoke and breaks it. Then he declares the return of the people within two years. Jeremiah had worn the wooden yoke of Babylon, and on his neck, and had prophesied to the people. Chapter twenty-seven, verse two. Hananiah breaks Jeremiah's yoke and prophesies the return to their homeland within two years. He spoke words that pleased the people. The people did not like wearing the yoke of Babylon. Thus. The people favored the words of Hananiah over the words of Jeremiah. Anyone who speaks words that are pleasing to the ears is welcomed by others. However, believers are blessed when they follow the words of true prophets. Then how do we distinguish false prophets from true prophets? First, we can observe the principles of the Bible. Anyone who speaks words that are inconsistent with the Bible is a false prophet. Second. False prophets focus on people. Their focus is on the world and people. Third, we can learn from the fruits of the prophecies. A good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Jeremiah here does not fight the false prophet. He simply does what he is meant to do. Jeremiah is gentle and humble. Jeremiah does not display anger, nor does he retaliate. He stays true to his duties. He continues to fulfill his mission. Jesus also walked this path. First Peter chapter two verse twenty three. Verse twelve. Shortly after the prophet Hananiah had broken the yoke off the neck of the prophet Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah. 
Here, God speaks to Hananiah through Jeremiah. God tells Hananiah that since he broke the wooden yoke, he will instead wear an iron yoke. To anyone who breaks off a wooden yoke, God will give him a yoke of iron. When God commanded Jonah to preach the word of God to the people of Nineveh, Jonah did not obey. The command to go to Nineveh to preach was a yoke of wood. Jonah ran away from God and ended up in the belly of a fish. The fish's stomach is an iron yoke. What again is a wooden yoke? It is something God gives us. It is our mission, and we must obey it. Second, it is the cross that God gives us. Third, it is a light punishment to lead us to repentance. When we carry the wooden yoke, God walks with us and makes it easier for us. He also opens new roads for us. If we do not wear the yoke of wood, God gives us an iron yoke. An iron yoke cannot be broken. We are trapped in it with no other option. It cannot be avoided. An iron yoke gives us great pain. Therefore, we must accept the wooden yoke and obey God's word. The people taken to Babylon wore the yoke of Babylon. They repented and became humble. They had become humble on the outside. However, they were spiritually blessed by God, who had given them spiritual wealth. We as believers must wear the wooden yoke that God has placed on us. Verse 15. Then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Listen, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, yet you have persuaded this nation to trust in lies. Verses 16 through 17. Therefore, this is what the Lord says. I am about to remove you from the face of the earth. This very year you are going to die because you have preached rebellion against the Lord. In the seventh month of that same year, Hananiah the prophet died. God said he would kill Hananiah. With his lies, Hananiah put the people into confusion. Hananiah's words did not come from God, but Hananiah lied that they were from God. He deceived God's people. As a result, God put Hananiah to death on the seventh month of the year. In this way, false prophets perish. We will continue with the lecture on Jeremiah chapter 29. 
The title of the chapter is Seek the Lord with All Your Heart. First, Jeremiah sends a letter with guidelines for living to the people of Judah in Babylon, verses 1 through 9. Second, God looks after his people in captivity in Babylon, verses 10 through 14. Third, there is a warning for the people left in the land of Judah, verses 15 through 19. Fourth, the false prophets Ahab and Zedekiah are cursed, verses 20 through 23. Fifth, the false prophet Shemaiah living in Babylon is punished for speaking wrongly of Jeremiah, verses 24 through 32. Read verse 1. This is the text of the letter that the prophet Jeremiah sent from Jerusalem to the surviving elders among the exiles and to the priests, the prophets, and all the other people Nebuchadnezzar had carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. God speaks to the people through Jeremiah. Jeremiah sent a letter to the prisoners in Babylon. He delivered God's message to the prisoners in Babylon. Verse 2 This was after King Jehoiakim and the Queen Mother, the court officials, and the leaders of Judah and Jerusalem, the craftsmen, and the artisans had gone into exile from Jerusalem. The time Jeremiah sent the letter was after King Jehoiakim and the Queen Mother were taken as prisoners to Babylon. King Jehoiakim is also known as Jeconiah. This king was taken away to Babylon during the second period of captivity. This was in 597 BC. During that time, influential people were taken captive. 2 Kings chapter 24 verses 8 through 17. Eunuchs, Woodworkers and iron workers were taken away. Many skilled people became prisoners to Babylon. Verse 3 He entrusted the letter to Elasa, son of Shaphan, and to Gemariah, son of Hilkiah, whom Zedekiah, king of Judah, sent to King Nebuchadnezzar in Babylon. King Zedekiah sent Elasa and Gemariah as messengers to the king of Babylon. They carried letters to Babylon. Jeremiah entrusted his letter to these messengers. Shaphan worked with King Josiah during the religious reformation. 2 Kings chapter 22 verse 8 Hilkiah was someone who assisted King Josiah. 2 Kings chapter 22 verse 12 They were sending letters to the sons of these people. Verse 4 
This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says to all those I carried into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon. Through his letters, Jeremiah delivered the word of God to the prisoners of Babylon. Verse 5 Build houses and settle down. Plant gardens and eat what they produce. The letter tells them to build houses and live in Babylon. The false prophets prophesied a quick return to the land of Judah. Hearing the words of the false prophets, the people did not build houses and settle down, but they were excited to return home. Jeremiah tells them to relax and build a life in Babylon as prisoners. We must do our best in our workplaces and businesses. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10 Verse 6 Marry and have sons and daughters. Increase in number there, do not decrease. Next, God tells the people to find wives and have children. He means for them to have proper marriages. He wants them to build families of faith. Their children and families will be better off and their faith will be stronger. Third, verse 7 tells the people to pray for Babylon's peace. God wanted them to pray for the nation. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 We too must pray for our nations and cities. If we do so, our nations will be at peace, we will be free to worship, and we will be able to to evangelize to others. Fourth, God warns them to not be deceived by the false prophets. Chapter 29 verses 8 through 9. The false prophets prophesied the return to Judah within two years. Chapter 28 verse 3. Now it was time for the people to listen to Jeremiah and prepare for 70 years of captivity in Babylon. Jeremiah correctly delivered God's will to the people. In whatever circumstance we are in, we must learn to accept it as God's will and continue our lives of faith. Verse 10 This is what the Lord says, When seventy years are completed for Babylon, I will come to you and fulfill my gracious promise to bring you back to this place. God promised to bring his people back after 70 years in Babylon. God does not want to give us disaster. He desires to give us peace. He wants to give us hope for a future. When God's people in Babylon repented and became humble, He promised to bless them. 
We must believe in God's promises and carry the yoke He has given us. Ezekiel chapter 18 verse 13. God tests us and humbles us to give us blessings. It may feel like a disaster when we face hardships and trials. However, after the pain, God gives us peace and hope. Verse 12, Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. God says He will meet with those who earnestly pray and seek God. God listens to our prayers. Ezekiel chapter 11 verse 16 It is important that we wholeheartedly seek God. We must completely trust the Lord and call out for Him. In verse 14, God promises to meet His people. He will allow them to return to their home nation. It means God will send them back to Judah. God will restore everything to its original state and make everything normal again. We too must seek God and trust Him in our small rooms. We must believe that He will free us from captivity and have hope. Verse 15 you may say, the Lord has raised up prophets for us in Babylon. The people of Judah in Babylon will say, God has sent prophets for us in Babylon. However, verse 21 says those prophets are false prophets. They are the false prophets Ahab and Zedekiah. The people perished because they did not listen to the true prophet of God. They perished because they listened to the words of the false prophets. They did not listen to the true prophet but they chose to listen to the false prophets. Verses 20 through 21 Therefore hear the word of the Lord, all you exiles whom I have sent away from Jerusalem to Babylon. This is what the Lord Almighty, the God of Israel, says about Ahab, son of Koliah, and Zedekiah, son of Maseah, who are prophesying lies to you in my name. I will hand them over to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he will put them to death before your very eyes. Ahab and Zedekiah appear in the text. These people told false prophecies. God said he would judge and kill these two people. God judges false prophets in this way. Verse 24 Tell Shemaiah the Nehilamite. Here the false prophet Shemaiah living in Babylon appears. Shemaiah slanders Jeremiah and eventually is punished. 
Shemaiah, like Ahab and Zedekiah, was a false prophet with wrong political, religious, and moral beliefs. Even still, Shemaiah criticized Jeremiah. Jeremiah told the people in Babylon to plant gardens and eat their fruit. Verses four through seven. Shemaiah criticized Jeremiah for telling them this. When we look at verses twenty nine through thirty two. We see that Shemaiah is a false prophet. Shemaiah made the people believe in a lie. In verse thirty-two, God says He will punish Shemaiah and his descendants. Every generation has its false prophets. They also have true prophets. The false prophets' wrongdoings are eventually uncovered. They also face God's judgment. The words of true prophets eventually turn out to be true. They are fulfilled. Because they are God's prophecies, we must listen to the words of true prophets. This concludes the fourteenth lecture on Jeremiah. Thank you.